Welcome to another edition of our Treatment of the Sunday School Lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Pharaohs Persecute Israel. And it's for Sunday, September the 1st, 2024. Now, this series uses the same title, Scripture Week Sequence, sequence as the Radiant Life Adult Sunday School series published by the Assemblies of God. And if you want to order you a copy of your Sunday School book, you can give them a call at 855-642-2011. And I do not receive any compensation for that uh, for that little notice. I just want to let you know. Exodus, first chapter, verses 15 through 19. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Sifra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If, he's, if it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied. They are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. Now, the Hebrews had prospered, and the Egyptians began to feel intimidated. They put the Jews in slavery, but the Jews still kept increasing. Then the Pharaoh decided to kill all the newborn males by the midwives. But these midwives silently disobeyed. The midwives showed great bravery in refusing to kill all the male babies. Exodus, first chapter, verses 20 through 22. So God was good to the midwives, and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own, then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River. But you may let the girls live. God bless those midwives. It is a blessing to be obedient to God. But Pharaoh still had evil intentions toward the Jews. He commanded that every newborn Hebrew boy was to be thrown into the Nile River. What cruelty the Pharaoh demonstrated with that order. Exodus, second chapter, verses 1 through 4. About this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds among the banks of the, of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Here is the miracle of baby Moses. They put Moses into the river after they hid him for three months. And the timing that we will see of this river event is amazing. Exodus 2, 5 through 9. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, 
she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the baby, so the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Now notice how God timed everything perfectly. They put Moses into the river at a very specific time. Moses' sister was watching at a particular time. Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe at a particular time. All of the events were perfectly timed and a miracle happened. The daughter of the Pharaoh, who had ordered all the male babies to be murdered, adopted this little Jewish boy and paid the baby's own mother to nurture him. All because God planned absolutely everything perfect, perfectly. There's no coincidence in the life of a Christian. Exodus 2.10 Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Notice that Moses had all the benefits and advantages available in the world at that time. Moses was a member of the privileged class. He learned how to read and write, was a very literate man, but he chose to be with the people of God at the appointed time. Exodus 2, 11 through 15. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit the people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend, Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, Who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking, Everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened, and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Moses was a member of the privileged class. However, he identified with his tribe. He saw the difficulty they were having. His anger swelled within him as he saw the Egyptian beating his kinsmen. He thought he would be able to protect his kinsmen without jeopardizing his station in life. But Moses was wrong. His actions made it to the ears of Pharaoh. 
Moses had to flee Egypt. He escaped to the land of Midian. Exodus 2, 16-21 Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water and fill the water troughs for their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. When the girls returned to Reel, their father, he asked, Why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he, the father asked. Why did you leave him there? Invite him to come and eat with us. Moses accepted the invitation and settled there with him. In time, Raul gave Moses his daughter Zipporah to be his wife. Now Moses was accepted by the people of Midian. He took a wife from Midian. He settled down in Midian. He became a shepherd in Midian. Exodus 2 23 through 25. Years passed, and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help, and their cry rose up to God, and God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. Now, friends, God heard the cries of the children of Abraham. The time of slavery was ending. And we need to read this story and remember that story when we're faced in times of difficulties. God will hear our prayer. Well, friends, I want to thank you for listening today. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can contact me by email, donnybryson at gmail.com, or you can go to the website, www.gospelmailbox.org, or you can even call me on my cell phone. 423-355-3859. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.